So today we're going to be talking about friction. So friction is, there's two different types of friction. Uh, we usually think of friction as one thing, but there's two different types of friction. Um, and friction is a force that opposes the force of motion. So we've got our pushing force or our forces that are going to cause something to move, and friction is going to be the force that opposes that. Um, there's two different types. There's static friction, and in static friction, there's when no motion is occurring. And then there's kinetic friction, and in kinetic friction, that is when the force exerted on one surface by the other when the surfaces begin to move. So if you look in this first picture, this guy is pushing really hard on this chest of drawers, but it's not going anywhere. So he's pushing this way. Friction is pushing back. If motion occurred, it would be going here, but this is black. Motion's not occurring. So this is static friction. When he finally pushes with enough force to break this free, then it would be kinetic friction because this is in motion. So this is the drawing at the bottom that you're going to put on your Google, or not your Google, your doodle notes. So you have friction in friction resistance in newtons on your y-axis, and you have force in newtons on your x-axis. So this first line right here, that steady slope, is your static friction force. And that static friction force is equal or just matches the applied force here. So if you look at the rise would be 20 and the run would be 20. So your slope is one the whole way up. It's steady and it matches. So he can push and push and push and push and push and nothing is going on here. Nothing is moving. Then we're going to reach this threshold of motion. And if you look right here, this coefficient of friction is 0.5. Once we reach this threshold of motion, that's when that chest or whatever you're pushing finally breaks free and begins to move. So when it finally breaks free and begins to move, the resistance decreases drastically. So we're going to have this drop off in the graph of the frictional resistance here. And then it's going to become constant again for some range of speed throughout the rest of the pushing process or the moving process. So before the threshold, our equation for friction is static friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times your force. You're after the threshold, it's your kinetic friction, the force of the kinetic friction, times the coefficient of kinetic friction times your force in newtons, or your net force in newtons. All right, so matter is not as smooth on its surface as it appears. Um, there's actually a little bitty tiny bumps throughout all matter on the surface. When you blow it up or when you look at it under a microscope, you can see all of these um, jagged edges, these jagged jerky edges. Um, on the very smooth surfaces, the atoms can become so close that there's actual electrical forces acting between them that's causing the friction. And so when you slide the objects over each other, they experience jerky motion as those bonds or jagged edges are broken. If you look at your doodle notes, there's a reason it's got all of these little jagged edges around the outside. It's to remind you that these tiny little things called micro welds are what cause friction. Um, the details of the process of causing friction are still unknown. It's still something we're researching. We're learning more and more about it every year, but it's not fully understood yet. The way I like to think about this is it's kind of like plates on the earth that are stuck together and there's a lot of friction there. Nothing is moving, nothing is moving, nothing is moving. So it's static friction because those plates are still pushing on each other. And then when those plates finally break free, there's a lot less force all of a sudden and they move a great deal. We feel that jagged motion as an earthquake. That's what's going on when we're pushing two objects against each other. It's just happening on a much smaller scale, so you're not going to see those drastic reactions. All right, the next thing we need to talk about when we talk about friction is that air is a fluid. So because air is a fluid, it causes friction. Um, and that's unlike the friction you would find in a solid surface. The friction of air depends on the speed of the motion, size, and shape of the object, and the density of the object, and the kind of fluid it's moving through. Some, some air, some fluids are more viscous than others. So the friction coefficient is going to be different for those fluids. Also, if you're falling through the air, there's a lot less drag force or air resistance on you if you don't have a parachute. When you open up the parachute, you're changing your size and shape. So by changing your size and shape, 
you are changing the amount of drag force on you, which ultimately causes you to slow down or speed up. If you've ever watched people jump in base suits or do the skydiving video, I think I posted it earlier on this PowerPoint, um, if you watch that where they skydive in different formations, this is what they use to get into and out of those formations. They're using the fact that as they change their size and shape, they can change the amount of drag on them. So when the drag force is equal to the force of gravity, we're gonna call that our terminal velocity. So the body is released from rest. When it's released, the only thing that's happening is the force of gravity is pulling on it. And as the force of gravity starts pulling on it, the drag force or the resistance of the air starts pushing up on it. And for a long time, you're going to have a body accelerate and that drag force is gonna be less than the acceleration. Eventually though, they're gonna equal out. And when they equal out, we say that they're at terminal velocity, meaning they're no longer accelerating, they're continuing to travel at the same rate. Um, a lot of times things won't reach terminal velocity because they're not high enough above the earth or they're not falling a far enough distance to reach terminal velocity, but this is something that skydivers and things can definitely reach. So here's some different terminal velocities. Um, a table tennis ball, it's like a ping pong ball. Its terminal velocity is nine meters a second. A uh, basketball is 20 meters a second. A baseball is 42 meters a second. So you can see how the size and shapes and weights of those different balls affect their terminal velocities. All right, so frictional force is dependent upon the materials that the surfaces are made of. So if you look at this graph over here, you can see we have normal force over here and we have kinetic friction over here. And so a block, a wood block, was drug along these surfaces and we measured the amount of force it took to get it to move. So we have a sandpaper, a rough table, and a polished table. And you can see that the kinetic friction was greater when on the sandpaper than it was on the polish table, which is something you would expect. So the slope of the line is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the two surfaces, and it relates the frictional force to the normal force. So if you go back and look, it relates the frictional force to the normal force. This right here in the middle is the coefficient of friction. And this is where we get our formulas for friction. So our, our formula for kinetic friction is the force of friction kinetic is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force. The same thing is, it's the same equation for static friction except for the friction force, the force of friction, the force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the net force, or the normal force. And we have tables that tell us what these coefficients of friction are. So we have cast iron on cast iron, glass on glass, leather on oak, non-stick coating on steel. You can see how those coefficients go up and down, um, steel on steel with castor oil. So you can see right here, if we're using a lubricant like oil, that coefficient of friction goes down immensely. Um, non-stick coating, there's essentially no friction there at all. But then when we have cast iron on cast iron, that cast iron surface isn't really smooth and polished, so it's got a much larger coefficient of friction. All right, from here on out, I'm gonna let you work through this PowerPoint yourself. There's two practice problems that you can work through. Um, the force of friction. So in order to have a frictional force, we have to have a coefficient of friction. Meaning, up until now, every problem I've given you has said disregarding friction or disregarding air resistance. Um, now we have to have that coefficient of friction. It has to be given to you or it has to say that we're not, the problem has to say that we're including the force of friction in it. Um, there has to be a normal force between the two surfaces. So a normal force is a force that is the perpendicular contact force exerted by a surface. For instance, when I lay my papers on a table, my paper, gravity is pulling my papers down, but they're not going through the table because the table is pushing up on my papers and that pushing upward is a normal force. We're gonna get into that more with Newton's third law, exactly what that is, but just kind of know the gist of it for now. Um, and also there's an applied force or someone is trying to move something. So. In order to work a problem, you have to know that there's a coefficient of friction. We're gonna include friction. There's a normal force. It's sitting on top of something. It could be the earth as your normal force. And we're trying to move the object.
The rest of these are going to follow your notes just like always. So they're going to go in the blanks of these notes just like they always do. I'm going to um, zoom the screen out really quick and let you look at my doodle note that's a completed doodle note so you can see and I will also include a picture of it. So if you want to pause the video, there's my completed doodle note for all the notes for this section. Please excuse my technical difficulties. I can't find this for you. 